last week. Let's see what, you, what, what you've learned. When the disciples saw Jesus walking upon the sea, did they immediately recognize him? They, did they immediately recognize him? No. What did they think Jesus was? A spirit. Was they cool, calm, and collect when they saw what they thought was a spirit? All right. What did they do? Oh, man, you're quick to answer the others, but this in here might stump you. What did they do? Don't the Bible say they cried out? Isn't that right? Ah! They thought it was a demonic spirit. That's what they thought it was. What did Jesus do when they cried out? No, not, but he, that, that's later on down the line. What did he do? But, but what happened after they cried out? He talked with them. Am I right? They did not recognize who they was. Remember when I said, you know, when somebody talks, you know, maybe you don't recognize them. I, talk, I used my dog for an illustration. My dog went nuts when I pulled in with my truck. And, and uh, you know, I live with a dog. Well, it's not my dog. It's my wife's dog. But anyhow, I, you know, I, I live with, with, with her. And she knows me, but she couldn't smell me didn't recognize me, and she's just going crazy, and I rolled the truck window down, or, and I said, Sadie, shut up, and she instantly recognized my voice. As the disciples cried out, bless the Lord, they instantly recognized Jesus' voice, hallelujah to the Lamb. But he talked with them. What did Jesus say to them? Be of good what? Cheer. It what? It is I. Be not afraid. Remember, the I am is here. Say that with me. The I am is here. One more time. The I am is here. Hallelujah. What's the Greek meaning for cheer? Yep, got it. Is them Jeff's notes, Lori? <laughs> Cheater. <laughs> I've seen Jeff taking down notes. <laughs> Remember last week, I was giving you the answers to everything I was going to, I was going to put on. <laughs> Hallelujah. What did I say cheer was? Do you remember what I said cheer was? Joy having fun. Can you say that with me? Joy having fun. When Jesus got into the boat, what happened? When Jesus got into the boat, what happened? The wind ceased. Right. And the disciples, what? Were amazed. According to Scripture, they were amazed and considered not. What didn't they consider? What? The miracles of the fishes and loaves, the multiplication of them. Why didn't they consider it? Their hearts was hardened. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to have to give you a B on that. Last week, you guys got an A minus, but I'm going to have to give you a B. Maybe, maybe a little lower, 50-50. I don't know. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb. But no, you know what? It, it gets your mind thinking, you know, what did I learn last week when you, when you have this Bible trivia? Bless the Lord. And you know what? You'll remember that. You'll retain it in your spirit. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Let's go into, into our, our study uh, tonight, chapter 7, brand new chapter, Mark the 7th chapter. Let me get there. Mark the seventh chapter. Mark 7, 1. Let's read it together if we would, please. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. You know, Jesus' biggest opponent came from this religious elite. It didn't come from the outside world. You'd think it'd come from the sinners, but it never came from the sinners. It came from the church world at that time, the religious elite, the Pharisees and scribes and Sadducees, the high priest of that day. Hear me, they was the biggest opponents of Jesus. In Mark 7, 2, listen to what they said to him. And they were, when they saw, uh, read with me, and when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say with unwashed hands, they found fault. You see, they're eagerly wanting, eagerly wanting uh, uh, to find fault with Jesus so that they could accuse him. Stop and think of this. I want us to compare this wood, just jump ahead just a little bit in Mark 12, 13. Here they was trying to accuse him 
that the disciples wasn't washing their hands before they ate. Now, in Mark 12, 13, look what it says here. And they sent unto him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians to catch him in his word. They wanted to catch him in something he said to incriminate him. Stop and think of this. You, you see, his biggest opponents was the Pharisees. And, and the, as I said, the religious elite of that time. But they was trying to catch him in something that would go against the word of God. How many know Jesus is the word? Duh. You see, here they are trying to argue with the word. <laughs> he, he's the living word. He's the one that inspired the written word. Now, how many know you can't outsmart the Lord? Stop and think of this a second. Hear me. He's all-knowing. He knows our thoughts before we even think them. Now, let's think of that. Hallelujah. And here these scribes and Pharisee, Pharisees are trying to incriminate him and trying to catch him in something that, 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 that disobeys the law. But I'm telling you what, listen, you cannot incriminate, listen, Jesus, because he is the word. And somebody said amen. So what they're doing is arguing with the word. And can I tell you something? I don't care who you are. Bless God. I don't care if you're, you're, you're atheist. I don't care, you know, what you are. An unbeliever, hear me. Bless God. You cannot argue with the living God. And somebody said amen and amen. You might be able to argue, but you can't win the argument. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Going back to 7-2, it's a fact that neither the unwashed hands nor the bread that was uh, the real source of the contention, but it was the spiritual bread of Jesus which the disciples fed that offended the authorities. Stop and think of this. You see, it wasn't really the bread that they was after. They was after Jesus. They was looking for something to get him in, and that's what they was after. The Pharisees taught that demons uh, unseen could sit on the hands of anyone, and if the hands were not washed, they could ingest them. Boy, stop and think of that. Somebody ought to shoot them with a stupid sticker. You ever think of such st stupidity? I'm telling you, it's, it's some of the things, and, we, and we're, as we go down through this, you're going to see some of the things that they get into. They was called fence laws. They wasn't even the word of God, but they was nothing but traditions of men. And can I tell you something? There are many people that are held in bondage because of traditions of men. Folks, traditions are fine as long as they listen, coincide with the word of God. But when they become the traditions of men and not the word of God, which the Pharisees, listen, they was using partial truths, but they wasn't the totality of the word of God. And can I tell you something? They, they tried to use the word on the word. <laughs> can I say that? They tried to use the word on the word, and the word, listen, the word straightened them out. And folk, I want to tell you something. Hallelujah. You and I, as today, especially in the, in the area of, of, of false teachers and pastors and, and evangelists and what have you and all the things that's going on in the world today, ought not we know the word of God today, praise the Lord forevermore. Because the way that you, you understand what is false, what is right, what is wrong, is simply by weighing it with the word of God, by putting it alongside the word of God. I believe it's Amos, uh, he had a plumb line and they, he, the Lord told him to take that plumb line and and hang that plumb line down against the wall. And when you hang that plumb line down against the wall, it showed if the wall was straight or if it was crooked. Can I tell you something? The Word of God is God's plumb line. It will show you if you're right or you're crooked, one of the two. And somebody said, Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But how many know that this was, it wasn't scriptural, hear me, that, that demons sat on the, the, the hands of, of individuals as they ate if they didn't wash their hands that these demons could be infested or be ingested inside of them and, and the individual could become demon-possessed. Can I tell you something? That was nothing but a tradition of man. And you'd be surprised at some of the traditions that man clings to that are they're not scriptural at all. And somebody said amen. Mark 7, 3 through 4, listen to what it says here. Let's read it. For the Pharisees... And all the Jews, except they wash their hands, eat not, 
holding the traditions of the elders. Keep underlining that word tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not, and many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels and tables. Once again, this amounts to nothing. All it was was just uh, uh, the tradition of a man. The biblical background of all this washing came out of, of Exodus 30, 19 through 21. The priests washed their hands before they ever entered into the tabernacle. Now stop and think of this. I want us to look at it, if we would please, in Exodus 30, 19 through 21. Exodus 30, 19 through 21. It says, For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water that they die not, or when they come near to the altar to minister to burn offering, to, to burn offering made by fire unto the Lord. You see, the washing speaks of the purifying of the priests before they could ever come into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're washed by the blood of the Lamb. We're washed and cleansed of the mind through the washing of the water of the Word of God. Praise the Lord forevermore. But understand, if they didn't wash, hear me, and they come into the presence of the Lord, they would die instantly. Now, you know what that speaks of? It speaks of purity and holiness. How many know we, live, we serve a holy God? And understand something. Any preacher that does not preach holiness and righteousness, that preacher, listen, is not a preacher at all. Folk, I want to tell you something. Without holiness, the Bible says, no man will see God. Hallelujah. All of our holiness has got to come through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we're to live Holy, pure, righteous lives. Amen? Hallelujah to the Lamb. But uh, uh, Exodus, it says, For as Aaron and his son shall wash their hands and their feet thereat, when they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water that they die not, or when they come near to the altar to minister to burn offering made by fire unto the Lord. But you see, it was, it was precisely for the priest of that time, and what they was trying to do is pass this off, on the Israelite people. And, and uh, when it's the, the, uh, the intentions, hear me, was for the priest, once again, it wasn't for the people. The priest had to wash. So therefore, they was using this as a tradition to add to, well, if the priest got to do it, you know, all Israel has to do it. So it's, it's, it's once again, it was a tradition of the elders. Stop and think of this. And I said, tradition's good as long as it coincides along with the word of God. And somebody said, amen and amen. Praise the Lord forevermore. Mark 7, 5, listen to what it says. Then the Pharisees and scribes ask him, why walk not your disciples according to the traditions of elders? How many know Jesus is about ready to level a boom on them? Real quick, hear me. He's about ready to, to put the gavel down. You know why? Because he's going he's to correct him with the word. <laughs> then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not your disciples according to the traditions of elders, but eat bread with unvoiced hands? The Pharisees and scribes were constantly, as I said, accusing Jesus and the disciples of not following the traditions of elders. He would not accept the, bi the binding character, hear me, of these man-made regulations. He, here's his answer in Mark, in Mark 7, 6. He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites. <laughs> now understand me, this wasn't behind the scene, folk. Bless God. But this was right out in the open. He said, well, he brought up Isaiah the prophet. He said, well did Isaiah prophesy you hypocrites. I got a funny feeling Jesus wouldn't be welcomed in the house of God, his own church today. You know why? Because he didn't play games. Stop and think of this. As it is written, this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Wow, what a smack in the face. You know, there's other scriptures that Jesus called them white voiced walls, snakes, and vipers. Boy, can I tell you something? That's pretty hard hitting. That would really level down on the seeker-sensitive church. Somebody say amen. 
Hallelujah. They couldn't handle that. And I'm afraid, listen, that Jesus wouldn't be welcomed in, the ho- in his own house. And, and my, hear me. Hallelujah. When, when people are challenged with the word of God, one of the, the first things they want to do is rise up and contend against the person. And somebody said amen. And that's what they was doing with Jesus. They wanted to contend against Jesus. And Jesus says, all right, you boys want to contend? Hear me. I'll contend with you. You're trying to use scripture on me? I'm going to give you the scripture, what Isaiah the prophet says. You guys are hypocrites. Hypocrites. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. You see, these men were known by the Israelite people as rabbis, teachers. Hear me. All by the Israelite people. They was, they was holy people to the Israelite people. But Jesus called them what they were. He said, you're hypocrites. Young Nazarene preacher comes in on the scene. Here the people are, are calling uh, the Pharisees and scribes. Listen, they're calling them a rabbi, teacher, masters. Jesus steps in on the scene and says, you hypocrites. You know what hypocrites is? You play actors. Hallelujah, you honor me with the lips, but your heart is far from me. Can I tell you something? Can it be possible as being Christian that we go through religious routine, but there is no fervor on the inside of us? All of it is, hear me, is just uh, verbal uh, action and no heart knowledge at all. Can that possibly be in the church of the living God? That where we come in, sing three songs, clap our hands, shout praise the Lord, and go out the door, and it means nothing. If it doesn't come from the heart. Jesus knows the heart of every individual. He knew the hearts of these Pharisees. He knew what they was up to. He knew that they was trying to incriminate him. Hear me. He knew that, that they was trying to accuse him of something that he said. Understand me. Can I tell you something? He knows every one of us here tonight. Bless the Lord. He looks at the thoughts. He looks at the intents of the heart. Bless the Lord forevermore and evermore. Hallelujah. But these scribes and Pharisees, listen, uh, they was play actors. And they was good at the play acting. Matter of fact, they were uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you something. We've got the very same thing in church today. We've got wolves in sheep's clothing. Listen, preachers twist, twisting the, the word of the living God, just like the scribes and the Pharisees, listen, to fit their petty doctrines. Folk, I don't know about you, but we must know what the word of God declares. Amen and not go by, listen, the traditions of the church. Somebody say amen. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. Now, we can get into all different types of church doctrines and, and traditions of men that's, that's non-scriptural. Let me give you a few things uh, for Catholicism. We'll just use it. Using scripture, show me where the immaculate conception of Mary, Mary was born without sin. Where can you find that in scripture? You can search all through the scripture and you won't be able to find it. Stop and think of this. What is it then? It's a tradition of men. It's a tradition of the church. And sometimes people will say, well, if it's not in the Bible, we'll go by the tradition of the church. Can I tell you something? Your church cannot save you. Jesus is the one that saves you, not your church. Bless the Lord forevermore and evermore. Can I tell you this? Mary had to get saved just as well as anybody else had to get saved. Hello? Hello? Bless the Lord. Using Scripture, show me where the assumption of Mary. Mary did not die, but ascended like Jesus. Where is it found in Scripture? It's not there. There's nothing there. It's a tradition of men. Using Scripture, show me, where the, show me the rosary. Where you, where you pray or count these beads. It's a tradition of man. Now stop and think of this a second. Hallelujah. Using Scripture, show me where we're to pray to Mary to, uh, to speak uh, uh, to Jesus. No place in Scripture. And, you know, we could go on and on and on and on and on of traditions of church. Hear me, doctrine. And we could go right into the, into the Pentecostal doctrines as well. Hear me, some of them are not scriptural at all. Some of them are nothing but traditions of men. Stop and think of this. Traditions of the church. Folk, I don't know about you, hallelujah. As I said before, tradition's good as long as it coincides with the word of the living God. Am I right? 
as long as it goes in, in line with God's word. Bless the Lord forevermore. We've got to know what we believe. And not just take it as the pastor's word, as some do. Take it, well, it's just, this is what the pastor said. No, listen, be a Berean and study the scriptures. Open up your Bible, read the Bible, and see it in the scripture. Hallelujah. And say, man, that's right. Now, hallelujah. That's, that, that's scripture. But if it's not in the scripture, hear me, and it's a doctrine of man, the only thing the doctrine of man can do is bring you into bondage. Hello. Bring you into bondage. And that's what the scribes and Pharisees, listen, they was just trying to control the people is what they was trying to do. Jesus was getting bigger crowds than what they was getting, stealing away the church. And they had an offense against him. And can I tell you something? They knew, listen, they wasn't preaching the truth of the gospel. And there's, there's preachers today know they're not preaching the gospel because, and they're afraid to preach it because they're afraid they're going to offend some of the people in their church. Brother and sister, hear me. I would much rather offend you than offend God. Hear me. Hallelujah. And, and, and we're not in the offending business, but if you preach the word of God, listen, people are going to take an offense at you. That's all there is to it. Hear me, they're going to take an offense if you stand upon the word of God and not be moved away from it. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So I don't know about you, but I stake my claim on the word of God and won't be moved away from it. Hallelujah. And can I tell you something? It'll bring out the boo birds. Am I right? I said it will bring out the boo birds. They, the, some won't like what you're preaching, what you're teaching. But can I tell you something? It's not your word. Search the scriptures and see if it's not God's word, what you're preaching. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If it's not the word of God, then you've got, a, you've got contention. You can, you can argue the case. But if it's in the word of God, hallelujah to the Lamb, you have no argument. If you, and if you're arguing, the only way you're arguing, you're arguing against the word of, you're arguing against God, not against man. And I don't know about you, but you know, you find yourself boxing God. Listen, you can't outbox God. He'll box your ears off. <laughs> Praise the Lord forevermore. <clears throat> but uh, the Pharisees, uh, they were proud of their pious attitudes towards Scripture and Jesus went right to Scripture to contend for the faith. Listen to what Jude says here in Jude 3 and 4. Jude 3 and 4. Well, go to Jude here if you would. I'm going to read all of Jude. It's not that big. If you don't know where Jude at, Jude's at, it's right before Revelations. you got 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, and then Revelations. And there's only 25 verses in Jude. Jude was the half-brother of Jesus. Look what it says here. Jude, the third, uh, third verse. Let's read it together. Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. We're to contend for the faith. Can I tell you something? Look at me. Jesus was contending for the faith. He called the Pharisees what they were. They were hypocrites. Are you hearing me? And they was twisting the scriptures. And can I tell you something? Men that twist the scriptures to fit their doctrines today and it's not in line with the word of God were to contend for the faith. You know the reason why? Because it corrupts morals in the house of God. It corrupts morals in the house of God. Hear me. And it could cost an, a, an individual salvation. For there are certain men, read with me, for there are certain men crept in unaware, stealthy, who were before old, of old ordained to the condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. That, look at that word lasciviousness. It's a license to sin. In other words, greasy grace. I don't even like to mention that word greasy grace. Stop and think of this. We just sung that song, Amazing Grace. But to turn the grace of Christ into liberty for an occasion of the, of the flesh to sin, child of God, understand me, that's an abomination to the Lord. And especially if any preacher says, you know, once you're saved, now everything's fine. You can do anything you want to do. 
Grace has got me covered. Now, future, past tense, hallelujah, even now, grace has got me covered no matter what I do. Hear me. Hallelujah. I can go out and get, commit all types of immoral acts. And can I tell you something? Grace has got me covered. I don't even have to pray and ask God to forgive me. That's a new fad going on now. You don't have to pray and ask God to forgive you anymore. Because God has already forgiven you. Uh, past, present, future. Hear me. You don't have to do that. If that's the case, let's just throw the whole book of 1 John, 2 John, 3 John out the door and John itself. Are you hearing me? Now, uh, understand something. Man, we're in a day and air, a day, I'm sorry, a day uh, and age of false teaching and false preaching, and the Lord prophesied that through the Apostle Paul to Timothy, saying in the last days people would not put up with sound doctrine. But with itching ears, they would find preachers that would tickle their fancy. Martin's common, com, uh, commentary. And I want to tell you something. They're on every street corner. You can find them. I'm not going to that church because they tre- pe- preach the truth. I'm going over here. There's more entertainment at this church. Hello. We're not in here to be entertained. We're in here, listen, to be discipled by the word of the living God. And that word disciple, listen, that offends people. Because disciple means discipline. Discipline means the word will discipline you. And somebody said, amen. And if you want to be a disciple of the Lord, we need to be disciplined by the word of the living God. It's one thing to be saved, hallelujah, brought into the kingdom of God. Now it's another thing to live righteous and holy before the Lord. And preachers were saying in, in this day, crept in unawares, healthy, hear me, and preached lasciviousness, license to sin, do anything you want to do, and you got that very same thing going on today. You can do anything you want to do, listen, die in immorality, and heaven's still your home. Now how many know that's not found in the Word of God? It's not there. You've got to read the Word of God. Can I tell you? Hear me. To somebody that don't love the Lord, to somebody that wants to sin, somebody that's led by the carnality of the flesh, that would really sound good. To please their flesh, I can still have my pie and eat it. Amen? That's what it's saying. But folk, I want to tell you something. Hear me. There is a cost to Christianity, and that cost of Christianity is crucifixion. That's a bad word for some. Crucifixion. Crucifixion means death to self. Say it with me. Death to self. Self must decrease and he must increase in me. Hallelujah. To allow the Holy Spirit to work and bring forth fruits of righteousness, fruits of purity, fruits of holiness in the name of the Lord Jesus. Of course, we talked a little bit last week about the fruits, the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22, love, faith, joy, peace, long-suffering, temperance, meekness, Faith against such there is no law. Hallelujah. That's all produced by the Spirit of the living God. It can't be produced by you. I don't care if you're trying to white knuckle it. Hear me, I'm going to be a good person today. Can I tell you something? You'll miss the mark because you you can't do it. It's the Holy Spirit in you doing it. And can I tell you something? He can do a better job than what you can. Your willpower cannot overcome your fleshly motives. Hear me. But the Holy Spirit, as long as we look to the cross where I died to that old man, bless God, and the Holy Spirit has the leeway, he can eradicate all the deeds of the flesh in our bodies in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord forever. But can I tell you, hear me, understand something. That's, that's, That's the model of the church today. Do what you want to do. And the Bible says there's a generation that, 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 that uh, does what their heart literally tells them to do. They won't go by what the Word of God says, but they'll do what their heart tells them to do. 
And can I tell you, that's the way the, the heart of, of the day of Noah was. That's the, the heart of the way the Sodomites was in Sodom and, in Sodom and Gomorrah. Hear me and understand. I know that we're living in the last days, and I know that, that we are that terminal generation because never in my history have I ever had to contend with such things as what we have to address today. It would never even be a topic, homosexuality. You know, is it right in, for a preacher to pre, be a homosexual? That would never even be addressed 15, 20 years ago. Drinking in the house of God. That wouldn't even be addressed in the house of God. But now it's a popular thing. It's got to be addressed. Multiple uh, 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 relations with, with, with uh, um, uh, somebody outside of your spouse. Common practice in the house of God today. Those things wouldn't even be addressed back years and years and years ago. You know why? Because there was, a, there was a doctrine preached, hallelujah, which was the word of God, and people literally abode by the word of God. Hallelujah. Even the sinners fell in line with the word of God. I said this years ago, you'd never see anybody out, out in the fields farming on Sunday. Never. It was a day of rest. Everybody took the day of rest off. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. There was a, there was a, a, a type of holiness back years ago, and then uh, you know as well as I do, uh, uh, I've said it uh, back in the, my days, and that's, that's not really not been that long ago, back in the early uh, 60s and what have you, leave it to beavers and, and uh, 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 what else is it? Father knows best and what have you. You know what? It would never even show the man and wife Sleeping in the same bed together. Stop and think of this. From where we went then to where we're at now, I want to tell you something you can't turn the television on without seeing somebody jumping in the sack with another woman. And it don't leave room for the imagination, hear me, because much of it's all undressed, every bit of it. I mean wide open. Can, I, can you imagine if the Lord should tarry another 10, 12 years? What it's going to be like on, on television? Stop and think of this. Now, folk, understand something. There is a people that want to live right before God. There is a people that is not looking for a loophole to see how close they can be in the world and still make heaven their home. There is a people that want to live holy, want to live pure, and want to live right before God. And can I tell you something? The boo birds will point fingers at them and call them legalist. Hear me? They'll call them uh, all different types of names. But folk, call me what you want. But I know what the Word of God declares. And we stand on the premise of God's Word in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Jesus had to contend for the faith. Hear me. The apostles had to contend for the faith. And I believe somebody and some of the preachers need to develop a backbone and stand behind the pulpit that's got some big platforms to stand up and contend for the faith and say abortion is wrong. Amen. Homosexuality is wrong. And not be afraid of it. Hear me. Bless God, I don't have that big of a pulpit, but can I tell you something? I'm not afraid to call black, black, and white, white. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'll use what God has given me, hear me, because I don't want to be held accountable for their, for their sin or for their blood. My, their blood will be upon my hands if I don't warn the sinner of his wicked ways. Hallelujah. So therefore, praise God, hallelujah, I can only teach the Word of God the way that we see it here in the word of God hallelujah to the lamb and give it to you the straight and give it to you the narrow and not use grace as a license hear me to sin I'm not looking to sin if anybody's looking to sin hear me hallelujah man I trust question of salvation are you hearing me tonight are you here how many in here just love the sin 
That's not in your character anymore. It once used to be in your character, but it's not there any longer. It's gone. That's the old man has passed away. Behold, the new has come forth. I don't get up in the morning and say, oh, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, God. I'm going to get up and I'm going to go out and commit adultery today. No. That's not in my makeup, hallelujah, to the Lamb. And that's not to say that we don't fail here or there, what have you, but even if you fail, you're, you feel so miserable on the inside. You take no glee in it. You take no entertainment in it, but you know that you have been duped, you've been wrong, you've sinned, and you, you humbly bow before God and say, Oh, God, forgive me. Please forgive me of what I've done. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And God will instantly forgive you if you're sincere in your heart. Once again, God looks at the heart. He's seen the heart of these Pharisees, and they wasn't nothing but play acting. Jude was going to consider of writing a letter here of, of, of a certain thing, but then the Holy Spirit changed the flow and told him, uh, to go in this direction that you must contend for the faith, an urgency to contend for the faith. I think it's an urgency today that the Christians contend for the faith. Amen? Hallelujah. For there are certain men, fourth verse, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Boy, I'm telling you what, that don't sound like grace and mercy. You can do anything you want to do. Hear me. I want to tell you something. These things are written for our admonishing. That we not follow in the same footpath as them because you'll receive the same condemnation. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Well, I don't believe there's a hell that burns with fire. I don't care what you believe, and I don't care what your church believes. I know what the Word of God says. It says that there's an eternal fire. It says that there's a lake of fire, and those whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life will find themselves in the lake of fire, along with the devil, the Antichrist, hear me, and the false prophet, and all of his demonic hordes. That's good teaching, Pastor Martin. <laughs> Hallelujah. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers, now he's talking about, listen, these teachers that come in stealthy under the, under the, the rug, so to speak, and, and teaching God's people. He called them, likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despising dominion, and speaking evil of dignities. Yet Michael and the archangel, when contending with, with uh, con, contending with the, uh, the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beast, and those things they corrupt themselves. Listen to what he says. Woe unto them! For they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward. Profit for hire. Say it with me. Profit for hire. What do you want me to preach to you? Hell, if you give me the price, bless God, I'll tell you anything good you want to hear. I'll tickle your ears. Hallelujah. And you know what? A prophet for hire. Folk, can I tell you? A true prophet will prophesy the word of the living God, and it will build, it will exhort, it will tear down, hear me, and it will lift up, it will rebuild again. Bless the Lord. How we need true prophets in this nation today and true prophets to come into the house of God and prophesy today. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain 
and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gain, uh, gainsaying of Kor. Look what he says. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withered, withered, without fruits, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Man, Jude's pouring it on. <laughs> what a preacher. <laughs> and he goes on, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Wow. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But beloved, remember you the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here he's bringing them right back to the word of God again. Brothers, remember the word that was spoken. No matter what the flattery these preachers have, don't be, listen, don't be overcome with flattery. The devil's good at flattery. Matter of fact, the Antichrist is going to sway the whole world, almost the whole world, over by flatteries. Stop and think of that. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. You know what? I heard one preacher say this. He said, you know what? Some of these preachers, these doomsday preachers, and some of these rapture preachers, you know, the Lord... Can't, he can't rapture the church away because I haven't enjoyed my new home yet. And I thought, how crazy. Stop and think of this. These be they who separate themselves sensually, having not the Spirit. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep, help me with this, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Read, and of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present, your fault, present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory Majesty, dominion, and power both now and ever. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Ought not we, listen, contend for the faith today? Should not the church of God contend for the faith today? I told you just uh, uh, last week it was or a couple weeks ago when uh, uh, Jehovah's Witness come to my house. You know what I was doing? I was contending for the faith. Hallelujah. He said, I'd like to debate you. I said, I'd like to debate you too. I said, I'd like to lay the word of God down and, send, and we'll just play, put it straight out. Bless the Lord. He talked about, he asked me a question and he said, where do you think hell is? I said, hell's in the center of the earth. It burns with fire and brimstone. He looked at me and started laughing. He said, how crazy. I said, do you believe the book of Revelations? He said, certainly I believe the book of Revelations. Hallelujah. I said, you need to read the last part of the Revelations, it said those names that are, written, are not written in the Lamb's book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. Also, did you ever read the book of Colossians where it says, well, how is it? He, not, he didn't only ascend, but he then descended, listened first, hallelujah, and led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. That was the other question that he asked me, where do you think paradise is? They think paradise is right here on the face of the earth. I said paradise is in the guts of hell under the old covenant. Every person that died under the old covenant went to paradise and hell. Satan had the keys, listen, of death, hell, and the grave. Hear me. 
until Jesus, the second Adam, come. Bless God. And what I, can I tell you something? Hallelujah. He didn't ascend when he said it is finished. He descended into the lower parts of the earth. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Stripped Satan of the keys. Unlocked, listen, the prison doors of paradise. And led captive, captivity. Hallelujah. And listen, gave gifts unto men. Can I tell you something? Paradise is empty today. Bless God. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the name of Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb. It's empty today. They just stood there and looked at me and said, I never heard of such stuff. I said, well, you need to read the Bible. I said, I don't know what that book you've got there, Watchtower or whatever it is. But, but I said, you know, you, don't, you just have nothing but traditions of men. And you know, I wasn't doing it to be smart or smart alecky, but I believe those men need to hear the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ so the Holy Spirit could work on their hearts. Listen, hallelujah, and convict them. And you know what? There was so much conviction going on. Here's what the head honcho said. He said, you ain't going to change me. I ain't going to change you. I'm out of here, Jack. Have a good day. I said, I will have a good day. You have a blessed day yourself. But can I tell you something? How many people are being duped by such doctrine? False doctrine running rampant. If you don't know the Word of God, look at me. You'd fall for such garbage. You'd hear it. You'd say, man, it sounds good. Sounds great. And I've said it before. If you don't know the Word of God, don't contend with, with the, with the uh, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses because they'll put you in a box. But if you know the Word of God, you can pretty well clam them up real quick. Real quick. And you don't need to know all that, the word, hallelujah to the Lamb. But you can give them the word and be very confident in boldness of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And then know that it's coming right directly from the Holy Spirit because the devil gets mad, hear me, when the word's coming forth from the Holy Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus. Bless God. But you see, I don't care where I'm at. I'll contend for the faith. If, if, if I think something is off base, and they want my opinion on it, I say, well, I, I won't give you my opinion. I'm going to give you what the Word says. Here's what the Word says. Ba, 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 ba. So therefore, I agree with the Word. I can't agree with what you're doing because the Word of God says this, and you're saying this. So who, whose Word do I believe? I believe the report of the Lord. I'm going to go with the Word. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. We're coming into a day, an air, uh, a day and an age where they're saying that, that the cross isn't enough. You know, it's not relevant for today's generation of technology with these kids that have been brought up in all different types of technology. Can I tell you something? This book was relevant from the piano took all the way up to book, uh, Revelations, and it's relevant for today. It will still change the hearts and lives of people that believe it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Well, we've got to be political, politically cl correct. You know what I say about it? Hogwash. Hogwash. It's time to stand up and contend for the faith of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. you know why? Because not only you're at stake, if the Lord should tarry, look at me, your children's at stake. Hallelujah. Because, understand me, if your children will be at stake, all's, if they get, all they're getting is error, they won't know what true doctrine is. But, if mom and dad know what true, true doctrine is, and they instill it into their children and their children instill it into their children, there'll still be a remnant church that walks the straight and the narrow that still believes in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and still believes this old book. And somebody said amen and amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. You see, there's more at stake, listen, than just ourselves. We've got to look beyond ourselves, bless the Lord. Your children are at stake. What is your children going to be taught in the next generation? I've discovered this as, as I grow older. I happen to look in the mirror today, and man, I tell you, I, I, 
I, I got a little bit of sun from riding my motorcycle, and the darker I get, the more white I, I see in my hair, whatever hair I got, and my mustache looked like Santa Claus, my goatee. I mean, pure white. And I realized and recognized that my generation is getting old. It wasn't too long ago, I was a young, snot-nosed teenager. And I looked at a guy that was at my age now, and I looked at him as an old man. That guy is old. He's got one foot on a banana peel and the other one in the grave. I discovered I'm not getting any younger, and I discovered my generation is dying off. One generation dies off, another generation comes up to carry a torch. That generation dies off, and another generation comes up to carry a torch. That generation dies off, another generation rises up to carry the torch. Look at me. Hallelujah. My generation, we're up to bat. We're up to bat. One day, we're going to step off the stage of life and enter into the presence of the Lord, then the next generation will rise up. And if that generation is taught in the house of God, hear me, hallelujah, that homosexuality is a, an alternative lifestyle, that man, listen, was, was born like this, what's your kids going to believe? What's the church going to believe? Think of this. Somebody has got to preach the gospel and teach the gospel unto the children and to the next generation, the generation after that. I look beyond my nose, bless God forevermore, my generation is soon to die out, and there's another generation coming up, bless God, if the Lord should tarry, and I pray to God, the generation in this church will be a generation of young people that are aflame with the power of the Spirit and might of God Almighty that will not be enticed, listen, by the ways of the world, but they'll, they'll, be, they'll be hungry for the things of God and be made more like God in purity and holiness and lifestyle in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But you see, that won't happen if Pastor Martin preaches messages of being political correct and being sensitive to, to, to people and not preaching the Word of God. Hallelujah. For you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Oh, can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's get back to this. It's getting late. In Mark 7, 7 through 9, ninth verse. And he said unto them, or verse 8, For laying aside the commandments of God, you hold the tradition of men as washing of pots, cups, and many others, such like things you do, they're adding man-made rules and discarding the commands of God, once again. In verse 9, Jesus, here he goes, he says, And he said unto them, Full well you reject the commandment of God. You know you're rejecting the word of God. You're doing it on purpose. That you may keep your own tradition. I've heard preachers say this. God has given me be a new revelation. You won't find it in the Bible. Can I tell you something? You need to shut it up right now. Because if it's not in the Bible, it's not God. It's of man. Let me tell you, there is no new revelation. There's an old revelation right here. It might be new to you, hear me, but it's the revelation of God's Word. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. They had a full understanding understanding and rejected the truth for Moses said honor your father and your mother listen to what he says for Moses he's going to use the word against them for Moses said honor your father and your mother and whosoever curse a father or mother let him die the death matter of fact just in prior scriptures that said children obey your parents 
For this is right and proper in the Lord's sight. Hallelujah. In doing such, you'll live a long life here on the face of the earth. He said, For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoso curses father or mother, let him die the death. Eleventh verse. But you say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corban, gift, that is to say, a gift by whatsoever, by a gift by whatsoever you might be profited by me, he shall be free. Now that sounds, you know, man, what in the world is he talking about here in the King James? Let me give you Dake's commentary. He said that is here. Here's here's how he interprets that the scripture. That is all that I can spare of material things uh, is dedicated to God, and I cannot help my parents. Children who did not want to support parents use this tradition as an excuse to evade the law. They would enter into a deal with a corrupt priest for a small percent to dedicate things to God which should go to the parents. They then could claim them to be God's and not their own. Thus, they would be free from any obligation to parents. Boy, that's sneaky and cunning. You see, they didn't have no welfare system at that time. Hear me. Nobody to take care of them. And the children was to take care of the parents. Hear me. And what they would do is take their money and they would give it to the crooked priest and say, well, I, you know, I dedicated all my money. Tell their parents, I dedicated all my money to God and I don't have no money, you know, to help you out. Sorry. And then the priest would take like 10% and, put, and give it back to the the kids, and the kids would pocket it. Stop and think of this. That's what the Pharisees was doing, but twisting the Scriptures. And Jesus was letting them know right off the bat. He knew their crookedness of heart and bringing it white right out in the open. Stop and think of this. I say, God, Holy Spirit, search my heart and see if there's any wicked way in me. And if there is, cleanse me from all unrighteousness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Very interesting in some of the things that was taught here tonight. Hallelujah. About the scribes and Pharisees and the priests of that time. And you know what? It's just as crooked today. Still going on today. Still got your scribes and Pharisees. You still got your prophets for hire. Hallelujah. But there is some that will contend for the faith in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I say this. Are you willing to contend for the faith? Bless God. Because I know sooner or later, listen, you're going to come into contention with somebody. Somebody, you're going to have to contend for the faith. This is what the word declares, and this is what I'm going to stand on in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It might cost you something. Amen? It might cost you something. It might cost you friendships. Maybe your friends might leave you. Maybe your family members might leave you. Hello. But brother, hear me. I would much rather offend somebody by preaching the word of God than offend God by not preaching his word. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe I'm looking at a bunch of warriors that's sitting in this church tonight. Hallelujah. That will not back up, will not give up, and will not shut up. And you know what? That makes people mad. It makes the devil mad. As I said before, We're not fighting personalities. We're fighting wicked spirits in high places. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So let us put on the full armor of God that we might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil in this last day until we see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto him be glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' name. And everybody said, as for me and my house, come on, help me preach it, we will serve God the Lord. Let's stand and give him a hand clap of praise tonight. Can we do that? Come on, let's give him a hand clap of praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. John, close us in prayer, brother, would you?
want to say all these things to our living in the end times and coming short. We ask that you give us the boldest the boldness to do all that you've called us to do. In Jesus' name, amen.